Welcome to the Air Power Airwaves, the Air Power Manufacturing Solutions podcast series where we talk about manufacturing issues that impact you. Welcome to a great edition of Air Power Airwaves, and today my special guest is the one and only Dan Seneff. I think you are the only one that's ever had no 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 you've had you've had a solo interview but two this is your second solo two time interview. defending champion yeah <laughs> that's, that's right that's right, <laughs> that's right. and uh, last time we did this was actually the interview took place was it December twenty twenty yeah that yeah sounds right yep and we were in the midst of some serious chaos at that point uh, and then we planned on doing another one. I guess uh, early this year, yeah. we're already just timestamp. You're gonna know where this is uh, June of 2022, and uh, we were planning on doing it early this year, and it's been a busy year. It has been a busy year. There's been a lot going on, a lot of change, a lot of, a lot of shifting. Uh, so we're basically gonna dig in. Okay. Talk about like the gap of the last year and a half. Okay. Uh, uh, First, before we move forward, if you have a question for Dan, you can email at him at, no, just kidding. (laughs) You can can call him at 1-800-334-1001. I will warn you, uh, even with me or anyone else in the building, trying to get a a few moments with him can be difficult because it's like meeting after meeting after strategy meeting after... Text me. You know, text me. I'm pretty good at it. I'm pretty good at answering. So don't text the 1 800 number because it's not going to do you. Uh, but uh, if you want to listen to this interview in a car, uh, you can go to airpowerairwaves.com and you can find all of our podcasts there. Uh, airpowerlive.com, all of our videos. So the video version of this podcast will be there as well. And uh, all things air power is airpower-usa.com. And uh, just launched the web store, which mm. you had a lot to do with yep. uh, over time. And the guy behind the camera had a lot to do along with Kyle, Kevin, other individuals. Um, that can be found if you go to our website, and I believe it's shop mm. on the top, but uh, you can also go shop.airpower-usa.com. Uh, social media, you can find us on YouTube, 100, 100 plus videos on YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, we're having our arm twisted lately. People want to see air power in TikTok and Snapchat. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you were going to say hey, that. How many TikTok videos have your kids been like, look, Dad? Yeah, I, yeah. They, they, yeah. We had that discussion this morning with uh, with our, our guests this morning about uh, their kids and just that's how they know what TikTok is. It's interesting though. I mean, just the I remember when we started getting more and more active. Actually, you know, with Jai, um, you know, on social media and having the conversation around the different forums, right? Oh that yeah. People find you and just the dynamic and the change, sort of from. Uh, even two years ago or even a year ago, right? Because I think just TikTok, right? I think that really came out and was started to become a big deal like during COVID. Like yes. That's when it really sort of surfaced. And so Straight you know, if forward. you asked me, it, yeah, if you asked me two years ago, I would have said, well, I don't think TikTok was around. I would have said, why would we ever do that? But I mean, just the different ways, right, that people, um, you know, view content and, and, and try to connect, educate share. themselves and, and connect and things like that. It's, it's just interesting that the way that dynamic continues to change. Like my, my kids, we were talking about that dam- the, the dynamic of age hmm. versus social media platform. You know, between my wife and I, we have four boys and they're all in their 20s. Right. 20, they'll, 20 to 28, okay? And uh, none of them have much to do with Facebook. Like Facebook's just like, whatever. Yeah, but Instagram's a big deal, you know. Twitter to a couple of them's a big deal, so you know they look at it a lot differently mm-hmm. than say we do, or and we think about that a lot when we address marketing or things that we want to do. We need we realize that there are young engineers out there. It we've had that discussion before. Yeah, you walk into a plant, 
and you're like, okay, I guess we need to go back to this engineer's office to look at. He's like, nope, right here. Yeah. Here, here's the numbers. You know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, you know, just we've got three kids, and our daughter's the oldest, and you know, you talk about twenty. Maybe there's a range, right, of twenty plus or so. They don't do Facebook. What's been interesting to me? I'm not a Facebooker, but my wife is, and what's been interesting to me is that there's this group of kids, at least from a, you know, I'll say, 15 to 18, that are like they're they're rediscovering yes. Facebook, yeah. which is just odd to me. But you know, having that conversation with my daughter, I'm like, you're on Facebook now? Like, what do you? She's like, yeah, I just like to go there and check out the pictures, and there's different people that go on there. So it's just interesting the you know the kind of the ebbs and flows of the social media dynamic. Everybody looks at different layers of social media differently different channels i've always enjoyed looking at facebook like uh like an interactive address book or mm. a contact book because yeah. there uh, i'm not shy <laughs> we all know this and i have a lot of people that i've known or that i've met over the years different circles of life and uh and it's just kind of nice to have that quick like okay you know not phone numbers can change Addresses can change, married names can change, yeah. but their Facebook page is still there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. I'm still Always friends here, connect. so yeah. uh, it's it's just kind of nice that way. So, yeah, I I think uh, you know my uh, my oldest son was showing me on TikTok. You know, he he just loves it because he has a lot of downtime at work. Right, right. And uh, he's like, Dad, there's dudes powder coating on TikTok. They're showing water dripping out of a out of a um, compressed air yeah. <laughs> source. Yeah, I, I've you not, know, yeah, I've not spent much time. Actually, never. Uh, honestly, right? Maybe I'm showing my age, but uh, I'm several just guys in my circle. Like, there's a lot of instructional content, like because they're like one minute clips or something like that, right? As a motion or less. Yeah. And uh, some of these guys were telling me, like, oh yeah, you can learn how to tear this apart, or you can learn how to rebuild a carburetor, or you can learn. How, I mean, just there's a lot of. It depends on how, what you're looking for, right? Um, That's right. Try to get educated on, I guess. I think we've got a great, I know we have a great marketing team here at AirPower, especially now. And it's kind of nice that everybody's willing to look at things and, mm -hmm. you know, hey, maybe that'll work. Let's give it a try. Right. That's one thing you, you stated from the beginning. I remember being in very serious meetings with you when you were addressing everybody in the company. And one thing very specific that, it, that, that, it just highlighted kind of who you are, um, and it was very good. You said, listen, this is the way I want to do it. This is the way I think is best for our company right now. Let's do it this way. If it doesn't pan out, if it doesn't work that way, it's okay. I will admit, this isn't working out how I thought, and let's change. Yeah. Let's shift a little and do it till it works. So, same thing. Yep. All right. Well, so we talked. We we said we were going to talk about it. Let's hit it. COVID. That was quite a ride. That <laughs> whole coming out of that whole process. Yeah. What's your takeaway from? I mean, we still have like the little salt and pepper sprinkle of it right now. Yeah. But you know, what was your takeaway from that time period? As the impact into air power, impact into manufacturing in general. Yeah, I mean, I think. Um some of the things that we learned, right, um, were around, one, one just about trying to keep uh, our employees safe, right? That was, I think, always at the forefront um, of our mind is, is how do we do that? And I know it got long in the tooth with mask mandates and things like that, and it, it got, it just was aware, right? It just wore on you. It wore on everybody. Well, you have right? people right. fighting on both sides of the yeah, fence. Yeah, not just COVID's not and, real. And no, no, COVID's a real it, thing. Yeah, I don't know where the truth lies in all yeah. of that but um, you know but for us I think one of the things that we were certainly unprepared uh, for which we've remedied you know it's just a simple thing like okay if people have to go 100% remote how do you do that right now that sounds simple but if you don't have 100% you know laptops right for your organization it's hard to go 100% virtual right and we didn't we didn't do that we did a mix of you know we, we were virtual certainly for people that didn't have to be here but you know there's functions we're a distributor we ship and receive things we build stuff in the back so you got to make stuff you got to ship stuff you got to service stuff so it wasn't an option for us to you know send everybody home but the reality was even in cases where we could have done that for a role that 
would allow us to do that. We didn't have the ability to do that. And then you had shortages, right, on things like laptops oh, yeah. in the lead time. So so that was a, a big impact. You know, as far as like, you know, manufacturing and sort of what we saw, you know, with customers, you know, I think it was very apparent to us the way that we had it, I'll just say change our style, right? Because, you know, historically, you build a great relationship, right? We talk about building trust and building lasting relationships. And when you do that, you afford yourself the opportunity a lot of times to walk in the back door of a facility, yeah. right? And show up in maintenance and go talk to the maintenance guys. And you know that because you, yeah. you've done it. Long and that, that just, changed. that that went away, yeah. right? And um, <clears throat> while some of that has maybe opened back just up, relaxed I think a there's bit, been a yeah. lot, there's been a lot more of just kind of clamped down. And so I think what it, one of the things that it um, taught us certainly was A, you know, there's a different selling style that you may have to implore, right? Yeah. Um, but then also, we have to always be showing value to the customer, yeah. right? And, um, and and showing value means something different to different customers, but sometimes it doesn't mean just stopping into the maintenance department and, and checking in on, right? If you don't have an appointment, you, know, you don't have a confirmed appointment, and somebody's not agreed to meet you right at the front door, you're not getting in. So it changed the way that we that we worked, right? And the way that we did business. One of the things that I think we really did a good job of, and I don't know if we talked about this and you know in that podcast or not, was you know, was that approach of, you know, whether it's Zoom or whether it's WebEx or whether it's Microsoft Teams or whether it's GoToMeeting, you know, different ways to to meet and convey a message, right? And uh, and so we did some of that. I think we've I think that's a place where we've continued to try to leverage that technology. Absolutely. Um, you know where where it makes sense and it doesn't always make sense but a lot of times it does and I think it sort of COVID forced us to look at that work differently I mean we were we were a, uh, a call into the phone number company yeah you know yeah. we weren't a company that did uh, you know, I'm sure there were a few people that had been doing it yeah you know as whatever but it was never an option right. prior to COVID for us now we get invited to a meeting, you know, the Microsoft Teams or, or whatever, and and we went through a progression of we tried this for yep. a while, we tried this for a while, and now we landed on our platform, and uh, it seems to be working well. But it, it does show a lot of growth in the organization for sure. And yeah, I think that you know changes is difficult certainly, and just that technology, um, that 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 move in technology. And we had sort of started. I think we may talk about this. But, we had sort of started down that road, but we weren't like fully immersed in it. But you yep. know, we've kind of gotten fully immersed in it now because we we had to. And and I think our, our teams um, and also you know customers have have adopted it. It's much more um, normal, I guess, yep. right? As far as uh, you know, kind of how we do business. But still a very um, face to face face to face business, right? Absolutely. I mean, I know. Um, Everybody, I, I, I say that everybody, you know, has probably ha- got at some point tired of, you know, having Teams calls and Zoom calls, and you know, just it, it's something about shaking a hand and looking somebody in the eyeball, not necessarily through a camera, right? Well, we so, all know who will use their camera and who won't. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> or whose camera's broken? <laughs> yeah, and, and it's crazy as that sounds. I mean, those are. I know it sounds it's personal. Like, no, it's it's like, a personal it thing. It is, but it also is. You know, again, we had laptops that they, we didn't even know the cameras didn't work because nobody ever used that yeah. camera. So now we've got people trying to use cameras. The camera won't come on, and that and that breeds frustration, right? And then people get upset, yeah. and then you know. So Why do I have to we, do this? Yeah. So we've, you know, we've worked through. I think um, you know a lot of that, a lot of that yep. kind of stuff. So cool. Now, I mean, you talk about coming out of that time period and some of the changes. We had a number of people that, I mean, I remember I remember this place was, let's call it uh, as skeleton as you could get it yep. for a short period of time. Yep. Um, just to make sure, because everything was kind of, we had a number of cases pop up and it was like, hey, before this goes nuts, yeah. let's, just, let's just do what we can to get everybody out of here and just skeleton. And one of the, the the effects of that is it gave us time to work on some projects, hmm. work on moving some things around, look at our look at the space we were using. Yep. And I wasn't involved in those conversations. I was involved in some of the effects of right. those conversations. <laughs> right. I think this is right. the fourth place we filmed. Yeah. The, the, um, and but hopefully, hopefully we'll stay here, people. Yeah. Because uh, we love this room. Yeah. Um, 
but there's been a lot of positive that came out of it. But one of the things, and you want to address it, um, you know, we had a walk-up counter, front door walk-up counter. Yeah. And that's no longer there. <laughs> Yeah, and that was kind of one of those aspects. You can talk about that and the impact of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so we sort of were forced to do that, right? We had been looking at that um, part of our business. You know, the the way our building was laid out was walk, you know, walk-in business and walk-in traffic was always something that we did, whether it was an eye coil hose or replacement parts or right. you know uh, tools or whatever that we had there. Um, you know, we would have traffic, and it was a, a lot of times, many times, it was local customers that we did business with, and they just needed a fitting or a coupler or a connector or adapter or whatever it was. And so it was never a business that we still don't want to walk away from. Um, but having to close, you know, our, our office, you know, sort of to the public forced us to take a look at in the number of transactions and the types of customers and the types of... Um, you know, experience, I would say, right, that we were trying to, to, to give our customers. And our goal was, even though we were forced to do some of that, right, our goal was to not necessarily impact the customer experience in a negative way. Well, it's hard to not do that when somebody shows up at your door and you won't let them in. Yeah. And they, they, they made a trip here from somewhere to buy something. So it's not an easy conversation. Um, but it was just a real conversation, certainly with us, and I don't say COVID gave an excuse, but it was part of the reason. And then I think as we continued to evaluate that, I think what we realized is that, uh, yes, we still value that business, but there's a different way to transact that business. You have a couple of options. One, you certainly can reach out to your account manager, right, who who's calls right. on you, right? You also can go to the web store, right? And we weren't, I don't know, we launched the web store about a month ago. Gosh, we just launched the web store. I'm trying to go back. Like I'm thinking we about just did the podcast and, that and, launched, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So I mean we were in the process of getting, you know, getting that going. And so it's you know, we're starting to get some traction there and um, so giving customers another opportunity, right, and another avenue to purchase. Again, hey, if I gotta go buy a fitting, what what would happen in, in a lot of times is somebody would show up here with a I'll just say a widget. Yeah, I don't have any idea what this part number is. I can't call customer service because I have no idea. And so, you know, we would take that widget, fitting, whatever, and then we would go spend 30 minutes, right, in the warehouse trying to figure out what is that widget. What is the widget? And so we spend 30 minutes um, and we find that what the person needs, customer needs, and they pay $2.30 for it, and we spent an hour trying to get him a $2.30 fitting yeah. coupler connector. Now, is that value? It depends on how you look at it, right? The customer found value in that, but it also caused frustration yeah. with the customer, right? Because they don't know what they need, and they show up, and they spend an hour of their time. So again, the goal is to try to continue to serve that need, but serve it in a different way. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's been, we've gotten, all sides of that, right? Some customers are like, yeah, I totally get it. Other customers are like, I can't believe you guys shut your doors. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, so it's a balance. And we continue to evaluate that and look at it. Um, how do we balance a good customer experience with, you know, resource resourcing, you know, that type of role and things like that. So, um, again, COVID forced us into some of that. But I think in the end, we will, we will afford the customer a better experience through either A, working with their account manager, right, who, who sees them regularly, or B, you know, purchase that on our web store. It's a piece yeah. of cake. Go in and search it. Now, you're never going to solve that problem with the customer who doesn't know what they have. Yeah, it doesn't know what the I can't is. put this part number in yeah. the computer. Like, I forget that, but um, trying to well, provide an opportunity. Get, get an account manager come look at it. Absolutely. Yep. So, all right. So, along with that same topic where we look at you know, the layout of air power right now in, in High Point. A lot has changed. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of shifts. So as we have run down to a kind of a skeleton crew, there was the opportunity at that time to start shifting some things, shifting some office space, better use of space. Yep. And then really looking at the flow, I guess you would call it the flow of projects. Yep. So in one building, we had people working on uh, uh, precision dispensing, the move, the you know moving of liquids, yep. moving yep. up, uh, and we had marketing working out of an area. Then in this building, we had things in different areas, and uh, we have a large warehouse 
We also had a giant space taken up by more warehouse. And so everybody looked at it and said, why don't we just put all the warehouse? So you want to talk about some highlights of those? So we, you know, the, again, back to the, the thought process, right? First, I would say and foremost, um, our, I would just say our, uh, our, our success rate, right, with customers, uh, when we get them to a high point, to see sort of what we do and how we do it, see our lab capabilities and our service capability and all those things is extremely high. It, it leads to a, a good um, a good success rate and a happy customer and, and those projects tend to, to go really well. You know, what what happened traditionally was when we would get customers here, you know, they would get to see, I would say, two thirds of sort of what we do, right? Because we were in a couple different places. We had projects in a couple places, right? We had some of our, I'll just say, competencies or capabilities. When you talk about a symbol moving co, right, some of that was in a different building. And so a customer, the benefit of a customer, right, coming here or to one of our other, what I would call a center of excellence, is to be able to sort of see the a symbol move co story, right? This is what we do. When we talk about a symbol and move and co, this is what we're talking about. And to be able to walk somebody through through that and allow them to see it does a couple things. One, it tells the story of sort of who we are and what we do and what we have the capability to provide as far as solutions. Um, but it also opens their eyes as a customer to things that they didn't even know we did or that they may have needed. Like, I didn't know you guys did that, right? So somebody might come here for a finishing application and walk through the tool and assembly solutions lab and realize like, oh yeah, we do a ton of assembly and we have that. So that's the, that's the benefit of it because I think we're we're second to none um, in our space with the lab facilities that we have. And so we bring customers here, we do runoffs, we do demos. Um, and so we got all those one into one facilities. So when a customer comes here, they have an air power experience and they get the full experience of a symbol move code. So that was a big piece of it. Another big piece of it, you know, through, you know, talk about COVID through COVID. I don't know if I got the opportunity, fortunate or unfortunate, but when we scaled down and and shut down the place because we had an, an issue, right? And, we, and yeah. it was pretty expensive. And there were about three or four people who had already had COVID and had recovered. And I was the either fortunate or unfortunate one of those. And so, um, you know, spending three or four days back in shipping and receiving and sort of our inventory area, you know, I got a whole laundry list of, uh, of, of bright ideas for how we were doing things and how things were organized. And I know that team hated to see me uh, after that because it's like the Monday morning quarterback, right? Like I know that team does their job and they do their job well. And then you come in behind them and you're like, well, why are you doing it like this? Or why are you doing it like this? But um, it's also it's also a good second, third, fourth set of eyes, right? Yeah. Think about what we do uh, as a solution provider for a customer, right? They know their process. We go in to a customer. Our job is to understand their process and be another set of eyes to talk to them about, hey, have you thought about doing it this yeah, way? And they don't necessarily have the exposure that we do to right. 40 other companies that are doing right. things differently right. and right. the profit is much better. Yeah. So so just around that same topic, you know, there was, so that was part of it too, but it really was a, to your point, we had a lot of our small parts inventory in one place. We had our large parts inventory in another place. And there was a lot of inefficiency, right? Shipping and receiving was back in another place. You had another place. And so... You know, when you're trying to, uh, you know, bring packages in, right, and then you're trying to pick, pack, and ship, right, packages back out, you know, the process of picking parts and getting them, you know, putting them up to stock and then picking them back to ship out, it was just a lot of, there are a lot of moving pieces to it, and it wasn't necessarily set up as efficient as it, as it could be. So part of that was to consolidate that, put it in one location, we moved that to our upper warehouse. Um, you know, we, we did we did a lot of work to try to make sure that we hey make make for a comfortable climate right um, yeah. because that's kind of what we're used to so we've done we've, we've put a lot of effort and, and money into that um, to make sure that we've uh, made made a good environment for them but you know if you go back and talk to those guys now and talk to them just about the, the flow of, of process it's uh, it's become much more efficient and we didn't you know we weren't looking to have one less person but we've you know there's a role that we've not even backfilled that it's not ne necessary because we've consolidated that there's not all this you know walking back and forth and wasted you know time yeah. so that's that's helped out a lot 
you know, and then moving that inventory out allowed us to basically bring our projects team all together. And what we've seen, you know, is our, you know, what we consider our run rate business, right? We're distributors. So it's box in, box out. And there's also solutions. So when you look at the solutions part of our business, which is, you know, the old school uh, BASF used to have a commercial that says we don't build the things that you buy, we build the things better. That's how I look at what we do, right? And so we take a, you know, a widget, right? And we make that widget do X, Y, and Z. And so we've seen that part of our business grow significantly because I think customers, you know, obviously want value added solutions. And so we offer that. And so as that uh, part of our business has continued to expand, we obviously need more space. And so putting all the project uh, group into sort of one area uh, made a ton of sense. And um, outside of things that are under NDAs, which we have projects that are under NDAs, but when a, when a potential customer comes into our facility or a vendor or a, any one of our partners and sees the type of projects that we are working on, I mean, it's a showcase, yeah. right? It's a showcase yeah. of solutions. solutions. And so that's a, that's a big piece of it too. So we, so we did all of that. Um, and we got the labs, we moved all the inventory, shipping and receiving is all together. Uh, you know, we moved HR down here in one building. We moved this, you know, right. this part of our facility here again, all in one space, and then um, and so that's been all part of that. And then the, the kind of the latest big thing was our service department. And again, I, I hope we show some pictures because it has been. I know we'll, we've I know we've thrown some out on. We'll on, be doing uh, a big LinkedIn. feature on them soon. Too. That's awesome. I can't say enough about. Um, I mean, uh, I can't say enough about our project team but our service team uh, and what we've done in the service department not just about the facility but the facility is a big piece of it you know service historically I'll just say historically uh, for air power it was a necessary evil okay and it was sort of a means to an end at least that's the way it was looked at that's not the way that I look at it and I don't think that's the way our team looks at it right it's a huge uh, value add uh, yeah. for us and for our customers the ability to service what we sell uh, and so, you know, what we talked about was, hey, if we're going to blow up the service department, let's 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 make it a world class. I mean, I know we can figure out process, but let's make sure that it's a world class service yeah. department that we will be proud of and are proud of bringing customers into and through. And we're excited about what that's going to mean. Again, not only about the the way it looks, but just the flow through right of product. So our service business has grown significantly. You uh, touched on something years. though. The, the with you know Tyler is is over that Tyler Mabe is over mm -hmm. that division right now, and he really seems to be a stickler for process. Yeah, and he's he's good at it. Yeah, and he's he's really good at that type of work anyway. Right. So um, I've had numerous conversations with him, and actually. I was laughing with him the other day. I said, have you made the team eat off the floor at least once? <laughs> and he's like, no, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, it's absolutely beautiful. The floor looks wet. It's yeah. just beautiful. But, uh, you know, I just we just met with Tyler before you came in okay. and, and okay. talking with him about it. But Tyler and I have been talking for a while. Like, just yeah. keep me posted. Put me out, you know, enough time to where you can be done and completed. Uh, so we're looking forward to doing a pretty creative shoot and showing off that whole process. He's got a, uh, I give Tyler a, a, just a ton of credit. He's got a vision he for does. what he wants the service department to, to be, right? Not just look like, but to be. Yeah. And uh, he understands the value that it provides. I mean, obviously he was a service technician for us for several years and, you know, repaired GEMA equipment and repaired Ingersoll RAN equipment. I mean, repaired, you know, a little bit of everything. And so... Um, he, I think he knows what good looks like, and he's got a vision for for what that is. And so, what you know, just even the facility, whether it's the floor or it's the workbenches or it's the the things that we're investing in, um, you know, what I've told him is like, hey, we want it to be world class, okay? And if we have to move a little slower to make it world class, then we'll do that. But let's don't let's don't sacrifice on the yeah. world class piece of it. Right? Again, it right. it's not just about. The stuff, right? That's out there. It's about the process, and it's about the people. We've got some great technicians, and he's doing a really great job. Honestly, cross training, making sure that he's got a team that understands. Like, okay, I'm not just doing the fluids, right? I also do DC tools, and I'm not just yeah. doing GEMA, but I also, 
you know, so that's a, a that's a that's a I huge do liquid add. and powder. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly right. So that's that's been a that's been a nice. Addition. And we can unstick pumps. <laughs> um, yeah, I get it. That's a it's it's a. I can see how that department's kind of looked at or had been historically. It's kind of like necessary evil type thing. Right. But man, you know, customers are willing to pay to have those repair to have those repairs made. And you know, I, I have interviewed uh, individuals in this company before about those processes. You know, we don't just you don't send your tool in, and we just do the repair. Right. You send the tool in, we break it down, and we figure out what needs to be done, and we're going to tell you this is what it's going to cost. You have the choice, right? And we'll do it. What we'll do, whatever you want to do. You yep. know, we'll repair it or not. And um, you know, I think some people think that oh, I don't want to send it in because they're just going to do it or whatever. It's, yeah. That's not the case. So yeah, the one, just one other comment about the you know just Tyler and, and I'll say the technical you know services team because we we've made some more of kind of I say of these changes structurally and then again the whole goal is to how do we better serve the customer. And so, you know, taking the technical services team, which includes the install guys, right, the project guys, the service department, the field service department, right? So we've got really, I'll say four, I'll say regions, right, in north, south, east, west, and and, uh, and we've got four, I'll say, first point of contact. I don't know that this has officially gone out yet, so I may be uh, leaking information, but, you know, somebody who owns field service in each one of those regions. Right, first point of contact. Now you might call Chris Hawkins, and he might not ultimately be the guy that takes care of it. But you know, we're really trying to not to say carve out field service from bench service, right? Because sometimes it's the same. We've got a lot of bench service work, and we have a lot of field service work, and so sometimes those resources cross over. Right. Um, but having somebody that owns them, I mean, that that really falls under Brian Gaddy's team, technical services team. But the same guy who will go out, if you think about it. You know, the same guy who goes out and, and assembles and starts up and commissions a PD2K, it makes a lot of sense if, if that customer has an issue that that same guy might be the guy that comes out and actually does field service Correct. on that, right? Correct. He understands how it was plumbed. He understands how it was set up. He, so, you know, we've, we've put, I think, that structure in place that allows us to do that. And uh, I'm really Basically working about. smart. Yeah, I, I think know. so. I think so, and yeah. uh, and like we talked, you talked about at the beginning, right? So we try to put these guardrails up, and and I've said this from the beginning, right? It's like we're going to bounce all around, it's just stay yeah. between these guardrails, but we're going to make some mistakes, and it's okay. We, we have to back up. Hey, we made a mistake. Let's back up and let's go a different direction. That's right, right? So that's right. Um, anything else fresh on your mind? No. Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, we did this in, I know we did this in November, right, 2020. So a lot of time has kind of passed, of December 2020. You know, we I talked a little bit about the Zenmar acquisition back then, right? But that was still pretty new. Um, you know, we were six months into that. That's been and, really uh, good. It's been, a, it's been incredible. Honestly, both of that, both of the acquisitions, you know, both Lee Patterson and Zenmar have just been a, I think first and foremost, such a great cultural fit with us I think the cultures of those businesses really align well with our culture yeah. and that was uh, most important right I, I, I think yeah. because process is process and you can teach process cultures is a little different but uh, you know the both of those acquisitions have done really well the Florida market is great the Pennsylvania Maryland Delaware you know we're continuing to you know to expand up there and you know we've, we've set up our structure um, you know, with uh, sales leaders in those different areas, with the intentions of growing, right? Yep. So, and then, you know, you look at the Florida team uh, when we um, brought them on board. It was very different than Zenmar. They 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 had their scope on finishing, mm. and so finishing powder coating liquid, they knew that business and yep. they knew it really well. So. But then they they didn't necessarily have the exposure to the tool side or the or move side. Right. So we brought those in, but those were probably fairly easy to blend in a little bit. I'm sure the tools took a little bit more, but um, you look at Zenmar, that was a whole different beast. I mean, these guys are hoists, cranes, jib cranes. You know, they're they're in a whole different sector. Yeah. 
but yet that marriage has been so well yeah because that is now playing paying off very well for all regions of air power if you're like oh i could sell it you know this right now. and uh i just you know i did like a 23 hour round trip last monday you know a week ago monday right working with lauren up there and one of our vendors and it's just amazing the, the what those guys are starting to you know embrace finishing and uh yeah thank goodness yeah because in my world that's a big deal sure and uh um, it's been very nice and the, the acumen is coming the knowledge of that that uh industry base is coming it's been fantastic yeah you know one of the things i i think about the um you know, again, not to like hit the sort of what are we about, right? But that whole building trust and building lasting relationships, you know, affords you the opportunity to be able to go to a customer and say, hey, hey, by the way, we have solutions that are this now, right? And um, one of the things that I think we did really well uh, with, and it's sort of proven out, I think, with the Zenmar acquisition, A, one was there's good cultural alignment and great people, you know, in both cases, fantastic people. Um, so when you think about acquisition of what did you get, right? You got the people. That's what we got, and that was a great fit for us. Yes, there's a customer base, but there's no guarantee on the customer base, right? So, um, but the people there is a guarantee on, and those were those were great. But the thing that we did, I think we probably learned, and I think we did a little bit better with the Zenmar acquisition was, you know, rather than try to shove everything that we do down Zenmar's throat and say, hey, here's here's the funnel, open up wide, and let's just throw all this stuff at you. you <laughs> here's know, your target. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> You know, to be fair, we we probably kind of did that. This is the backup. This is the backup, and go a different direction, right? We we probably did a little bit more of that unfairly to the team in in Orlando. Like, hey, you guys know finishing? That's awesome. Here's all this other stuff. Go sell all this stuff. And oh, by the way, this is Air Power, and here's what we do, and here's how we do it. Yeah. Here's how you work with technical services team. And these are our project guys, and so it's a lot, right? You think about drinking from a fire hose. So one of the things that I think we learned and I think has really played out well, is that we intentionally, with Zenmar, took a step back and said, okay, like let's take a year and let's let you understand how we operate. Like, learn air power. Let's, let's spend a year sort of learning air power. Yeah. Keep doing what you do really well. You've got great relationships. You know the hoist and the crane and the tool side of the world. That's where you guys have been for you know several years. So just do that, but start to learn the new kind of process. Yeah. Start to use these resources that we have as part of our organization. And then after you know, kind of year one, now we'll start to introduce not everything, right, but kind of some key partners and some key relationships. And so you know, we're, we obviously have started to do that. We're into you know, a couple of years now, but I think that really, I just think it really accelerated our success. And I think we're starting to see the fruits of that certainly up in that market when it comes to finishing and sealing some yeah. pieces and things like that. I think one of the other things that's very evident is that, you know, Air Power has stepped back and like, okay, you know, we've gone from having all these salespeople with one or two sales managers to now we've expanded the sales manager, which basically is in, in some people's eyes out there that might be listing, you know, management is control or whatever, but uh, in my opinion, when you have, you know, when you, it's like a school teacher scenario. Mm -hmm. You have a school teacher, what's the student to teacher ratio? So if you have a situation where you have a strong sales manager who has that team, because ultimately that team is, they've got other people to go to, specialists right. and, and people out there, but that person, that sales manager is the one that's got to be there to, you know, mentor, support. Yeah. Uh, hey, you're falling a little off on this. What can I do to help you get here? Um, so, you know, we've taken some some great account managers that have just transitioned into sales management roles. Yeah. Which uh, they're, and all of them, I've known all those people that have shifted in that role and they're all responsible, good people that I'm sure will, yeah. will work closely with their team. But yeah, it says a lot about the mentoring value of, of yeah, I think it's it's hard to you know I, I, it's hard to have good players without a good coach, right? And I think uh, you know to your point about the law of diminishing returns, or you want to say like I think it's difficult, at least my, from my experience, you know, a person to effectively you know impact right a team of people, you know, and, and I'll say especially like account managers, just from my background, you get more than ten, you know, or twelve, that's a lot. 
right? Yeah. If you want to be impactful and you want to spend time in the field and you want to do that coaching and that mentoring, and those are the things that I think um, make sense, make good, um, you know, leaders. Again, I use the old cliche, right? You, you manage you manage things and you lead people, right? There's a difference. Yeah. And so that's really what certainly we're are looking for in those those sales leaders. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. I think we are super excited about um, about those changes. And you know, I think our we've talked a little bit before about our structure and you know the sole specialist piece, you know, application specialist. I think that gives us a a big um, competitive advantage you know, in yeah. the market. Um, and there are times when, you know, we I use the pitching analogy about pitching deeper into games. That's always what we want, right? If an account manager is a third inning pitcher, we want them to be able to be a seventh inning pitcher, right? And they don't call the bullpen until the seventh or eighth inning, right? Because it, again, it's just it's a multi, multiplicative uh, uh, effort, right? If you can sort of divide and conquer, um, that's better, right? That's Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, good deal. I don't think there's many stones I've turned. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, so, it's uh, uh, our, you know, our business is, is good, and uh, it is. Uh, it's been nice to, you know, to come out of COVID, and certainly we, we didn't talk about the, you know, supply chain constraints that we're dealing with, but I don't think that's news to anybody. It, it's uh, it's just one of those things we're we're doing everything we can to take yeah, care of things that customers. we're always like, you know, yeah. <laughs> two two, yeah. you know, like under a week lead time, yeah. or now, you know, fifteen weeks. It's, right. Uh, Pretty insane. Yeah, I mean, back in COVID, you couldn't get toilet paper. You know, now we're in. Now we got <laughs> all the toilet paper. Can't get electronic chips, right? All the toilet paper. Can't get laptop. Can't get any <laughs> right. So, uh, but all we're right. continuing to to work through that stuff, and you know, we've got great partners, and and I know they're doing everything that they can too. So, well, I can tell you, uh, you know, we get internal emails. Uh, I will tell you that there has been some internals and some external emails that have been going out and ads for uh, if you would like to work for Air Power, uh, you're a great guy to work for. I can tell you that. Thank you. Uh, but what I will say is, uh, if you're interested in working for Air Power, please go to our website. There is a, uh, I believe, is there a resources tab, Jai? It's under the yeah the company tab, the about tab. Yeah, the yep. about tab. About there's yep. Yep. So, uh, and that's the voice of Jai, the all things that makes me look good up here. Thank you very much, Jai. I'm glad you mentioned that. <clears throat> I have to beat that dead horse, but I mean, obviously, we're um, we're growing, and we're Absolutely. always looking for good uh, good people to join the team. And there, and there's a vast you know array of, of opportunities, whether Absolutely. it's sales people, technical people, install folks, service technicians. And this is um, not the only office in High Point, North Carolina. Right. We have multiple regions. Yeah. Um, pretty much if you are looking and you're interested on the uh, East Coast. <laughs> yeah. East Coast and uh, yeah. Southeast. Tennessee, Georgia, by, Florida. By all means. Uh, yeah. All right. So I'm going to wrap up this podcast. 1-800-334-1001. Just ask for Dan. Uh, air Straight power. to voicemail. Straight to voicemail. <laughs> Airpowerairwaves.com if you want to see Dan in the flesh. If you're listening to this on uh, on the uh, podcast Airwaves somewhere. Um, Airpowerlive.com is uh, all things live, all things videos of uh, the who done it and how to do it and how to put it together and how to process it. Uh, then airpower-usa.com for the store for everything else. So um, all of our all of our social media channels: YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the above. It may be coming to you soon. TikTok. <laughs> we'll make Dan do the first time. I'm not doing the first TikTok. <laughs> Your kids will be so proud. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, I think that wraps it about up, and I will end this one. Dan, thank, thank you, sir. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. It was great. Thank and you. Manufacture it a great day. 
thank you for joining the Air Power Airwaves podcast. Air Power Airwaves is a production of Air Power Inc. and Air Power Live Studios and is hosted by Travis Steyerwald. For more information, please visit airpowerairwaves.com. For more information on all of our products, brands, and manufacturing solutions, please visit airpower-usa.com. If you have any questions or need product support, please contact Air Power at 1-800-334-1001.